This problem deals with uh, cold air analysis. The Brayton cycle starts at, comes in at 300 Kelvin and 90 kilopascal at the inlet to the compressor. The compressor pressure ratio is 9, and the maximum temperature is 1450 Kelvin, and perform a cold air standard analysis using that value of specific heat, C sub V and C sub P, which gives us a K of 1.4. Determine things like what is the temperature at the compressor outlet. So you have the compressor, you're coming in at state one, you go out at state two, go into the burner from the burner, go into the turbine, then to finish it out, you go into a heat exchanger where you reject heat so you can close the loop. So state one, state two, state three, state four. Four components, compressor, burn and burner, turbine, heat exchanger. And if you want, you can go, okay, this is Q in to the burner. This is Q out in that heat exchanger. This is work of the turbine out and work of the compressor in. And then you should be able to sketch it on different property diagrams. But what are they asking for? For part A, the temperature at the compressor outlet, that's T2. The peak pressure, that's P2, which is also equal to P3 because it's constant pressure through the burner. What is the temperature at the turbine outlet? That's T4. What is the heat addition in the burner? Q in. What is the net work of the cycle? Two ways to calculate it, but W net is equal to either Q net, which is Q in minus Q out, or you can calculate it by work of the turbine minus the work of the compressor. Thermal efficiency, the ratio of work net to Q in and the back work ratio of the work of the goes back to the compressor to feed the compressor divided by work of the turbine. Well, um, here is the solution to that problem right here. I put it into an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. Does the format of the Excel spreadsheet look familiar to you? So uh, these are like input 9 for the pressure ratio, C sub V, C sub P, R is a ratio. C sub P over C sub V, as well as K. I mean, sorry, R is C sub P minus C sub V, as K is the ratio. Put in the initial pressure and temperature. I, I bold it just to help me see, okay, those are specified, as well as the maximum temperature at state three. And even I put a little note here showing, oh, that's how I calculate. The temperature at 2, it's temperature at 1 times PR, the pressure ratio, raised to the K minus 1 over K, analytic expression for cold or constant specific heats. And then we get that temperature at state 2. And then over here, I put an extra comment with numeric values in column I for the answer to part A, which is computed right there. And then we go comp uh, compute, compute the, uh, the pressures are easy. Then you get the temperatures as shown. So we have all the four temperatures, just using this equation twice. And then you can compute the work and the heat transfers in each of the components. So the heat transfer in the compressor, nothing. But the work compressor is this. How do I calculate this right there, the work? going in from 1 to 2 into the compressor right here. Is that equal to H2 minus H1? Now, I know that on this illustration I have a positive, but I, I put it negative here so that when I sum, I get the network of the cycle. I don't have to subtract it, but if I want to turn this around, now it's WC, which is H2. Um, um, 1 minus H2, and that's going to be C sub P times T1 minus T2, and you calculate a negative quantity, negative 263.3 kilojoules per kilogram of work for the compressor. How about the heat transfer in the burner between 2 and 3? Well, that's a positive in. 
that's equal to C sub P T3 minus T2. And the work of the turbine positive out C sub P T3 minus T4. And likewise, for the heat exchanger out, I put in, keep a negative sign there. And so this, um, to be consistent, get rid of that, put it in. And that's equal to C sub P T1 um, minus T4. That'll give a negative quantity of negative 476. Add the Qs, so we get the Q of the cycle. And add the Ws, get the work of the cycle. Double check that they're the same. They are. Double thumbs up. It looks good, so that checks. And then we compute the thermal efficiency. And you can even compare it with the analytic expression that's derived in the textbook. There's the analytic expression for the Brayton cycle. Um, thermal efficiency, assuming a cold air standard analysis. It's a function only of the pressure ratio and the K. And it, uh, these two values are consistent, 46.6%. And the back work ratios, 38.8%.